Under ideal conditions, these are the facts. Miami Dolphins are a three-point favorite over the Washington Redskins. They're similar teams. They both like to stay on the ground first, then go to the pass. They both love their defense. So we're now just moments away from the kickoff. Super Bowl 17 from the Rose Bowl. Number 31, Fulton Walker. Fulton Walker, number 41 deep. Jeff Hayes to kick it off for Washington. And Super Bowl 17 underway. It comes down short. And stopped at the 25 yard line. Miami Dolphins offense as Clarence Harmon makes the tackle. David Woodley is the quarterback. And with him, Tony Nathan, an excellent pass receiver. Andre Franklin, third in the National Football League and rushing the football. The wide receivers are Duriel Harris, Jimmy Cephalo, the tight end, Bruce Hardy, one of three tight ends that will be used by Miami during the course of the day. Dwight Stevenson has had a brilliant playoff. The center, Giesler and Loxo are the tackles. Kuchenberg and Taves, the guards. First down, Miami at the 25-yard line. That's Rose in motion, so he starts at tight end. Woodley, almost intercepted by the Redskins. Mark Murphy was the last man who had his hands on it. It was intended for Tony Dathan. Number 29, Mark Murphy, the man who calls the defenses. He's the general on that side. But the pass, the pass was batted by Rich Mallott, number 57. You see him there on Tony Nathan. Now watch him go up into the air. Actually, Nathan's the man that skipped the ball off. Could not hang on to the football. Okowicz dropping back from his middle linebacking position. Also part of it, tapped it there. But it was Murphy that almost came up with the interception, Dick. Second down, 10, 25-yard line. We're using two tight ends. Hardy left, Rose right. The big fullback, Franklin, short yardage, ran right into 295-pound Dave Butts and the middle linebacker, Neil Okowitz. The defensive alignment for the Washington Redskins. They allowed less points than anyone in the NFL. Mendenhall and Manley are on the ends. Butts and Grant are the tackles. 4-3 set. The linebackers, Olkowitz, the middle backer, with Kaufman and Mallott on the outside. Cornerbacks, Jarris White, former Dolphin. Rookie Vernon Dean at the corners. Peters on his way to the Pro Bowl. And Murphy, the captain, are at safety. Out of the shotgun. Third and nine from the 26. Woodley hit from behind, scampers, and slides to the 33 short of the first down. Monty Coleman, number 51, linebacker comes in in pass situations. Woodley appeared to have misjudged where that first down marker was. Actually, Dick, what happened to Woodley was he lost his feet driving for the first down. You'll have a chance to see it. One of the things that makes Dave Woodley such a valuable quarterback is his running ability. Gets Manley over the top there, but gets away. Now watch him. He'll try to cut here and just loses his feet on the inside. Turf a little bit loose at that point on the field, Dick. Tom Oros, who did not have a good day last week against the Jets, to kick. Mike Nelms, a pro bowler. They regard him as the best kick return man in the NFL, his peers. Oros gets away a good kick. Nelms at the 24. And finally drive down about the 28-yard line. A good coverage by the Dolphins. 44-yard kick, about a five-yard return. And Washington has the ball for the first time, and Joe Theismann, the quarterback. Theismann has with him John Riggins. Sometimes we'll see Joe Washington pass situations. The receivers, Garrett, only one catch during the year, and brilliant in the playoffs. Brown, a pro bowler. The tight end is Warren. We'll see Rick Walker as well at tight end. Those are the hogs. The big offensive linemen, Jacoby and Sark at tackle. The guards are Grimm and May and Bostic the center. First down from the 28. Walker with a tight end motion, and Riggins right up the middle. Powers for five. Now that was no surprise. They gave it to Riggins, and he had a good gain on first down before Dewey could make the tackle. The Killer Bees, they call themselves because of all the names that start with B, and there are three of them. Baumhauer, the nose tackle, a pro bowler. Doug Betters and Kimbo Camper are the ends. Brzezinski and Gordon on the outside. Due and Roan, the leading tackler on the inside. Small and McNeil, the cornerbacks, and the Blackwoods are at safety. Second and five. Riggins close to a first down as he slams to the 38. 
It'll be third and one. Up in the middle of the line for the Hogs, number 53, Jeff Bostick, working on 73, Bob Baumhauer. Bostick is a position blocker. Look at him go for the inside position. He's got Baumhauer off the line, just locks him up there, and all Riggins needs is a little crack. Third and just a fraction. Let's see what they do in short yardage. Otis Wansley, 39, comes in as a blocking back for Riggins in this situation. And Riggins follows Wansley across the 40 for a first down. It's a Redskin crowd. First down at the 41-yard line. Baumhauer made the tackle. We've talked about the physical nature of the Blackwood brothers, Dick. Number 42, Lyle Blackwood, coming up aggressively to dump one of the Redskins on his back. But I'm afraid it's the Redskins who win the war on that battle as they pick up the first down. First down at the 41, Washington taking the ball for the first time after Miami received the kickoff. The flanker screen to Charlie Brown. Gets a block. He's to the 50. He's to the Miami 48. First down. 12 yards before Ernest Rohn could chase him down. Chance to be part of the action. Those of you at home or watching elsewhere, Charlie Brown comes across in motion. They're trying to create some confusion so they can take advantage of it with a quick screen here. Fully half of the passes for Washington on first down are of the screen variety, but watch the quickness of Brown here as he eludes the defenders and uses his running ability to get extra yardage before Ernest Rowe, number 55, finally drags him down. Brown in motion, first down at the Miami, 48. Riggins tripped up a good knifing defensive play by 59, Bob Brzezinski. Ohio State All-American, a number one draft pick of the Rams in 1977, and traded as an unhappy Ram to Miami, where he said he is more than pleased. Dick, you asked me how they were going to stop Riggins. One of the ways they will try and do that is by using stunts and games up front with the linebackers and the linemen. You saw Brzezinski rushing in on that play. He was able to get back and take Riggins' legs out from underneath him. Passing set in the game now. Riggins has come to the sideline. So the second and nine brings Joe Washington and Harmon into the game. And Theismann dropping. Deep down the middle. Incomplete for Alvin Garrett. And broken up by Glenn Blackwood. Number 47, he's the younger of the two Blackwoods, University of Texas. Alvin Garrett, number 47, one of the Smurfs, and he's quickly downfield. Weissman has time to throw the football, looks first to his left, and then rifles it downfield. Watch number 47, right there. Comes across, gets a piece of the football and a bigger piece of Alvin Garrett. And it appeared that Garrett had beaten his man small but Blackwood came over to save it for Miami. It's third and nine. Bison. He is sacked at the 46 of Washington. Ernest Roan, 55. Leading tackler for the Dolphins last year and again this season. Number 55, Ernest Roan coming from his inside linebacking position, looping around number 73, Bob Baumhauer. Take it down at the line of scrimmage. Now watch Theismann. The pressure will come from slightly from his left. Getting pressure on the outside here from Bo Camper, who's driven by. That's Dewey coming. Now that's better from the other side, but it's Ernest Roan right up the middle, lands on top of the quarterback. They'll have to kick it away. Jeff Hayes, last in the NFC with a 38-yard average this year. Free agent rookie from North Carolina. And he hammers a beauty into the end zone. And Miami on the touchback will take it at the 20-yard line. A 54-yard punt by Hayes. That's his longest of the playoffs. The Dolphins have protected Woodley well. And of course, he's also an outstanding scrambler. Theismann himself a good runner. But sacked 30 times during the course of the year. So Miami has the ball. Defensive coordinator Richie Pettibone of the Redskins. He likes that big play defensive look, and he'll gamble. He certainly will. He's always played that way, and he's got this Redskin defense playing that way, Dick. From the 20, no score, first quarter. Tony Nathan 
Trying to get to the 25-yard line. Mendenhall, Olkowitz, and plenty of white jerseys to help out. Dick, one of the things that uh, the Redskins players talked about is that they would much rather see the ball in the hands of Tony Nathan than Andre Franklin. And their reasoning is that Nathan has had a tendency to be a little careless with the football. They feel if he carries it quite often, they'll be able to knock it loose and perhaps pick up a fumble. Nathan, who had an injury plagued year, was not up to the character of his past seasons, but has had a good playoff. Second down and six at the 24. 828 left for his quarter. That's Hardy in motion. And wide open is Sapphalo at the 50. Could go all the way. 40, 25, 15, and Miami has a touchdown. It appeared that Woodley was going to throw a short screen to the tight end. And then either he changed his mind or by design found Cephalo all alone on the sidelines. A 76-yard touchdown. Dick, I think he has the option on that. He chose to fake the screen right there and then go deep to Cephalo. Cephalo one-on-one -on -one coverage from Peters, and Peters simply cannot catch up. Number 23, the man behind him. Cephalo uses his speed to get him into the end zone, and the one thing Washington wanted to see happen, happens. They get burned with a long pass. Don Shaman, who has been bothered by a painful back injury, picks it through, and Miami has a seven-point lead. We talked about the fact that the Redskins wanted to make Woodley throw the ball deep. They wanted to force him to throw deep. And here he is, responding very successfully to Jimmy Cephalo on downfield for the touchdown. Eight minutes, 11 seconds into the first quarter. Miami 7, Washington nothing. During the course of this week, they kidded Jimmy Cephalo that he didn't have uh, major league speed. He said, hey, I ran a 9-8 in high school, and he certainly ran away from the Redskins. Well, he's one of those people we talk about uh, where we'll take performance over potential or over talent. He sure gave you performance on that play. That was four yards shy of the Super Bowl record. Plunkett to King, 80 yards. You saw earlier in the day on NFL 82. Short kick. Nelms at the 11. 20. 30. Look at him go. Going all the way to midfield. Mike Nelms. There's a penalty flag on the field, Dick. But what a great return by Mike Nelms. Tackled by William Judson, number 49. And Nelms has to be one of the most important offensive weapons on the field. 76 yards last week on a kickoff return. A great return here. They're going to march it back, unfortunately, as the Miami Dolphin defense gets a break. That would have put Washington in great field position to start this drive. Jerry Mark Bright, his first Super Bowl. Illegal block, number 56. On the run back, first down. So 56, Quentin Lowry, guilty of the foul. Perhaps we'll be able to see it. There it is right there, the shot on the back. Now, not allowed to take take the man on the back side, and Lowry ticketed with the foul, puts the ball back on the 25. Instead of near midfield. Riggins. Had a little room to the outside, try to come back inside, and there, a sea of aqua marine blue. Larry Gordon makes the stop. We asked the question earlier, would Miami's defense be able to stop John Riggins? The early answer, yes, they will. There's Bob Baumhauer doing a good job of shutting it off over the middle. A second play, these plays from earlier action now. Right there, that was the tackle from the outside by Brzezinski, number 59. Riggins has got to get himself moving. He got five yards on that play. That's the kind of that's the kind of running that got Washington into this game, Dick. Beisman, second down, six. Riggins. The big back from Kansas is to the 34-yard line. It'll be third down and one. Number 40, Mike Kozlowski. He's the fifth defensive back, made the tackle. Gain of five yards. One of the important members of that Miami defense, number 77, A.J. Dewey. What a great week last week. Watch him in pursuit here. Reads the play to the outside. Knows that Riggins must be stopped out there. Look at him fighting his way through, throwing his body into the stack. 
but Riggins almost able to pick up that first down, third and less than one. Riggins was rushed for over 100 yards in each of the three playoff games. Seisman on that control roll, but he's in trouble. Gets to the 30 and then is tripped up. Baumhauer, Grudzinski, and Due all surrounding Theismann. And so the punting team will come on for the Washington Redskins. Bob Baumhauer is certainly important to that play, but I believe it was the linebacker, Larry Gordon, coming upfield to shut it off. Let's watch the pursuit from the inside. Bostick trying to shut off Baumhauer inside. The Baumhauer able to escape. He'll finally make the tackle. But it was a fine play by Gordon, who forced Theismann back inside. Actually, Baumhauer didn't finish the tackle. He just got the first part of it. So Jeff Hayes to punt. Tommy Vigoredo back at the 30-yard line for Miami. The Dolphins leading 7 to nothing. And over end. Vigoredo has some running room. 35. And down at the 37-yard line. Picture postcard day in Pasadena. 7-0 Miami leading the Washington Redskins with six minutes remaining in the first quarter. David Woodley. On the course of the year. David Woodley was just an average passer, as you saw from those statistics, but has saved some of his best for the playoffs. Bill Arnsbarger and the Miami defense on the sidelines. From the 38. Threw a big hole all the way to the 50 yard line and almost took it the distance. Mel Kaufman, 55 around his ankles. It's a big game for Miami, 13 yards. Again, uh, Washington Redskins getting what they had hoped for defensively. They wanted to see Nathan carrying the football, but I don't think they wanted to see him making this kind of yardage. Fine play. They fake Franklin to the outside. Nathan darting up inside, showing great acceleration. Usually it's Franklin running up inside and Nathan running outside. Utilize 22 right up the middle. Fine game, first down. 50 yard line. Matt Moore, the veteran in motion. Franklin running into his own man. And then powering to the 31 yard line. A nine yard game for Franklin from Nebraska. He wears 39. That was Larry Zonka's number, and he made it very clear he, even though he wore 39 at Nebraska, he wanted 37 and his own identity with the Dolphins. And he certainly has earned that this year, rushing for over 700 yards, third best in the NFL. There they are. Freeman McNeil, the NFL rushing champion, followed by Tony Dorsett, the best in the NFC, and then Franklin. There's Zonk himself. He was always a favorite of John Chulis. Franklin has a first down at the Washington 37-yard line. A lot of people do not, do not realize, Dick, that during the regular season, Franklin averaged 4.1 yards a carry. And uh, John Riggins, who has had a lot more publicity coming into this game, averaged 3.1 yards a carry. Of course, Riggins' numbers in the playoffs much better than that, but... There's Franklin's record for both the season and the playoff. You can see the number of times that he has contributed with those big four-yard-plus games. Powerful legs. He was a blocking back at Nebraska primarily on second and one. Woodley. Bumble. Redskins have a shot at it. If it stays in bounds, did it? Yes. Washington ball at the 46-yard line. Dexter Manley made the hit. Dave Butts recovered it. Was hit by Dexter Manley. A hit reminiscent of the big hit he made on Danny White just before the half in that game against Dallas. Butts will be coming from, or Manley will be coming from the right side of your screen. Just swarms over the top of Woodley. The ball bouncing 20, 30 yards to the sideline. Had that ball gone out of bounds, as you said, Dick, Miami would have retained possession. That turnover table so critical. Dolphins a plus four. The Redskins a plus eight on the regular season. The Redskins have generated quite a pass rush. They've averaged four sacks a game in the last six. Here, yeah, a little razzle-dazzle, and now Theismann getting away and throwing to Brown no catch at the 13-yard line. Did not come down in bounds. Charlie Brown has Theisman drilling the ball. Glenn Blackwood on the coverage. Theisman did a good job of escaping the rush. A little bit riverboat gambler and Joe Gibbs as he sends Theisman back to take that little reverse flea flicker. 
Watch him hand off the first time, a second handoff, and now the toss back from Alvin Garrett. Theismann will get great pressure from Dewey right there, but Dewey misses the tackle. Theismann unloads the football, and now at the spot of the catch, a chance here perhaps to stay in bounds. The receiver, Charlie Brown, right on the sideline. No way to get those two toes down inside. Second and ten, a draw. It's Clarence Harmon toppled at about the 38-yard line. A good gain of about seven for Harmon. Who carried the ball infrequently during the course of the year, rushed for 168 yards. He's from Mississippi State, one of the many free agents on this Washington team. When he did carry it, carried it effectively with a 4.4 average during the regular season, Dick. Mark Mosley, who set an NFL record, 23 consecutive field goals this year, getting ready just in case. Third down and two. Bowsman over the middle. Caught for a first down at the 35-yard line by Don Warren, the tight end from San Diego State. Warren with Roan all over him, making a clutch catch and a Washington first down. During the 1981 season, Don Warren had a hard time hanging on to the football. But somewhere he found glue on his fingers in the 1982 season, has been a, a sure-handed receiver, has been well utilized by Theismann, by Joe Gibbs, a very important part of their passing attack during this past season. Two and a half minutes remaining, first quarter. Miami has scored on the 76-yard touchdown pass. Woodley to Cephalo. Redskins, after a turnover, have a first down at the Miami 35. Riggins. He's got at least seven. Starting wide and at 235 pounds, showing his speed as he cut up field. Dewey and Blackwood, Lyle Blackwood made the tackle. Brzezinski was there as well. A.J. Dewey will be all over the field on this particular play, coming from his inside linebacker slot. Gets a little block there from Grimm, number 68. But that's the kind of play that Riggins runs so well. Slipping outside, seeing the opening in the defense, and accelerating up through the hole. He rarely falls backwards. At the end of his runs, you'll normally see Riggins going forward. Second down in the long three. See Warren coming up through the hole. Or Walker to block the tight end, and then Riggins following in behind and has the first down inside the 25. Seven more yards for John Riggins. Former Jet, a number one pick in 71. Established himself as a free agent, picked up by the Redskins, then left football in 80 because he didn't think he was making enough money. Decided he better come back. He was bored and broke, he said. And had really an average year, didn't he, Merlin, during the course of the season, but he's been spectacular in the playoffs. He certainly has. And you saw Arnsparger concerned about what's going to happen as Weissman does not like what he sees and quickly calls a timeout. So from the 22 with the first down, the Miami defense was not what Theismann wanted in that play call, and so he's going to come over and talk with Joe Gibbs, his head coach. 57 seconds remaining. Less than one minute remaining in the first quarter. The Dolphins leading by a touchdown. A long play. Woodley to Cephalo, 76 yards. Dexter Manley, sack of Woodley, forced a fumble, recovered by Butts, and now the Redskins looking for the time score. Have a first down at the Dolphin 22. Inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line, Dewey and others to stop the big fullback of the Redskins. Second down and six for Washington. Dick, one of the things that we will see in this game that is very interesting is the blocking of the big tight end. Rick Walker, number 88, right there working on Gordon. And you notice how he locks Gordon up. He really has just got him where he is not possible for him to even be a part of the play. That's the strategy of that of that Washington offense. They blow right into you. They know that Riggins is going to come up through there and find the weakness then in the defense. Second and six, that's Brown in motion. Riggins again to the 15 to the 14. It'll be short of the first down by a couple. Gordon, number 50, made the tackle that time. The Washington Redskins like the play of number 66, big Joe Jacoby. And they ran up in there behind him again on that last play. And that is the end of the first quarter. Well, in the first quarter, the Redskins had the ball twice as long as Miami, but trailed 7-0. <laughs> well, one of Miami's big plays, of course, got them into the end zone. 
And that's what the Redskins are looking for right now, a chance to even it up. Ball at the 15-yard line, third down and three. That's Walker. Weisman to Riggins. Stacked up. He didn't make it. See what Joe Gibbs' choice will be on fourth and about a yard and a half for the first down. Dewey and Gordon, Baumhauer all in on that last play. And here comes the field goal unit for Washington. Mosley, not only three, 23 consecutive field goals, a new NFL record over two years, but uh, this year missed only one, 20 of 21. Big Joe Jacoby, number 66. They've run in right behind him, and he's been giving Bo Camper, number 58, a tough time. But Bo Camper stood him off on that play, forced the field goal unit. 31 yards away, and Mosley's kick is true. Now the Redskins capitalize on the fumble. Pasadena, California. There's a second half will be played uh, during the night. Miami leading 7-3 gets the ball. The Bolton Walker at the 5. 20. Got the speed. 30. And he's all the way to the 47-yard line. Oh, the Dolphins. They've read a lot about Mike Helm's tremendous kick return ability. And Bolton Walker says, I'll show you a little of my own stuff. 41 yards on the return to match his number. The clock at the bottom of your screen will show you how long that football is in the air. You can see the kind of power that Hayes was able to get on that ball. Now watch the coverage. Walker will come up inside. Now breaks to the outside very quickly here. Gets away from a couple of tacklers. That's Hayes who fell to the ground in front of him. They're lucky to get that final saving tackle. That was Williams, Greg Williams, I believe, 47, that came over and took him down from behind. Officially 42 yards on the kick return. This is Tony Nathan weaving his way to the Washington 45. A gain of eight before Mel Kaufman. And Mark Murphy can make the hit. Stopped by Mel Kaufman. Kaufman got into the lineup, Dick. Monty Coleman was injured, and Kaufman got in and has played so well that Monty Coleman hasn't been able to get his job back. Monty does come in to play, of course, on uh, passing downs to utilize his great speed. But Mel Kaufman has really become a player during 1982. He's a member of the NCAA Division II champion Cal Poly San Luis Obispo team. Nathan again. Straight up the middle to a first down at the 37. Dave Butts, number one draft pick of the St. Louis Cardinals in 73 and then traded to the Redskins, made the tackle. Gain of three yards. Tony Nathan from Alabama, one of four Alabama graduates in this game, and of course, like all of the football world, saddened by the news of Paul Bear Bryant during the week. Franklin. Boy, they appear to be king on Franklin. Nathan has done the running, but Franklin drawing the crowd. That was Dexter Manley spearheading the charge. Dick, let's take a look at the strategists in this game. Don Shula, of course, calls the plays for the Miami Dolphins, sends them in. And this is one of the men he's counting on today. Wants to use Franklin like a hammer up the middle. But when you've got three Redskins and then a fourth standing on top of you, very difficult to make yardage up the middle. A gain of only one for Franklin, who blocked for I.M. Hip and Jarvis Redwine and Rick Burns, all 1,000-yard rushers back at Nebraska. Woodley has a man, Guriel Harris, stopped at about the 33-yard line. They'll allow progress. Jarris White, 45, made the tackle. It'll be just shy of a first down. A gain of about eight. Harris from New Mexico State. Don Chula, he'll call the plays on one sideline. And on the other side, Richie Pettibone, the defensive coordinator of the Redskins under Joe Gibbs. There's Shula sending in the plays. Now he usually sends a messenger in. On the other side, they're sent in by signal. Watch Pettibone. That's his signal, which goes into Mark Murphy on the field. Murphy, the defensive signal caller, the general, will make both audible and visual calls for his defensive men. Woody Bennett into the ball game. It's Franklin that gets the handoff. Don Shula calls out his elephant backfield. 
two big men short yardage Franklin at 225 and Bennett at 222 Neil Olkowitz and Dexter Manley made the tackle but not until Franklin fought for the first down they ran that play right at big Dave Butts number 65 Butts of course plays the run very efficiently but Miami challenging him on the offensive line he's head up there and Gets the block of number 57, Dwight Stevenson. Stevenson coming from his center slot. Taves slipping up the middle. Butts able to get back into the play, but not until he had a first down. Franklin and Nathan behind Woodley, who throws to Cephalo. Touchdown maker is stopped at the 25-yard line. Short yardage, about five, maybe six. Vernon Dean, second-round draft pick, number 32 of the Redskins this year, the rookie from San Diego State, went to Los Angeles High School, so he's playing right in his own backyard. Dwight Stevenson, number 57, had a good look at him over the playoffs, one of the quickest centers in the NFL, and certainly has given us some, some exciting action to zero in on. Of course, his play very important against this 4-3 defense. Second and four. Nathan. Boy, they had good penetration did the Redskins that time. They beat the Miami offensive line off the ball and a loss suffered by the Dolphins as Dave Butts again right around that football. And that, of course, is exactly what Richie Pettibone wants. He puts in four defensive specialists, take, takes four of the slower players out of this game. This is what they call their nickel package. And they love to get Miami and any team they play in a long yardage passing situation. Ten minutes remaining in the first Richie half. 7-3 Miami. Third and five for the Dolphins. Out of the shotgun. Complete to Harris. And it's a first down at the Washington 19. And Woodley under a tremendous rush. Just didn't get the ball away. Dean and Murphy made the tackle. Mark Murphy leading tackler for the Redskins. Making another fine play, but David Woodley has certainly silenced a lot of his critics in this playoff run. They said he couldn't throw the football. Well, he zips this one. Duriel Harris at the other end of it, making the first down. Murphy finally polishes him off. But boy, that's fine play. Why, Tony Peters, the strong safety, you can't get into a backfield any quicker than he was on Woodley, and he still completed the pass. Nine minutes left, second quarter. 7-3 Miami. First down at the Washington 19. Franklin. He earned about three, maybe four, before Murphy and Kaufman could collaborate on the tackle. Dick, uh, Don Shula's offensive philosophy in this game pretty basic and simple. Wants to establish the running game. Wants to throw the ball short. And when he gets Washington where they have to gamble, where they come with the blitz, he knows he's isolated man on man. Then he wants to get deep, as he did to Cephalo, and get the big points on the board. Let's hear Woodley bark out the signals on this second down and seven. Appeared to be Manly offside before the snap. Apparently, uh, we didn't hear the signals, and neither did Manley. <laughs> It'll go against Manley. Encroachment number 72, defense, second down. That'll be second down and a long one for Don Shula's Dolphins. And that gives Woodley a down with which to play against Joe Gibbs in his second year with the Redskins, the NFL Coach of the Year, voted by his own peers, former offensive coordinator with the San Diego Chargers. Shula can afford to play with this down if he wants to. Let's see if he goes for seven. After a blitz, Franklin drives to the eight-yard line. Murphy made the tackle along with Manley. It's a first and goal for Miami. No question about the willingness of these Redskins to, to gamble. Looked like they had half the defense coming. Murphy's the man who's coming here. Tries to time it. Gets there in good time. Gets a pickup right there by Geisler, number 79. But just good hard running. 
by Andre Franklin to pick up that first down. Murphy, who during the strike ran in New York Central Park, he said even at night that helped his speed, he said. <laughs> I can understand that, Dick. First and goal from the eighth. Franklin. Good defense by the Redskins. One yard gain. Rich Mallott, one of the many linebackers to graduate from Joe Paterno's Penn State Nittany Lions. Replaced Chris Hamburger and is often uh, compared to him as an outside backer. Had a lot of injuries uh, over the last uh, year, year and a half, or actually in the past season. This season he stayed healthy. But uh, in the 1981 season, had a lot of injuries that kept him from reaching his potential. Has really come to his, his full potential as a linebacker during this season. Right? As a blocker might run it. Gets to about the three yard line. A little slow in developing. There was a point had Woodley decided to run immediately where he might have scored. Perhaps uh, trying to decide whether to throw or not. It's now third and goal at about the three. Woodley, the leading rusher among National Football League quarterbacks this year with 207 yards. Dick, I always hated that quarterback rollout I think it's the most dangerous play that you can run at this point on the field very tough for the defense to take care of third and goal from the three yard line Miami leading seven to three Woodley might have thrown that one away Joe Rose was the nearest golf and Vernon Dean came closest to the ball so the Redskins stop Miami's thrust at the three and Uva Von Schaman in to try the field goal. This one uh, just a yard longer than an extra point. We'll take a look at Joe Rose as he gets out into his path or pattern. Both he and Cephalo were to the outside. It appeared that that ball may have been thrown at Cephalo rather than Rose. Cephalo had hooked back inside. The ball thrown to the corner, but no one could get to it. Let's see if uh, Uva is getting over the flu. He's not only got that back problem, but he's had the flu this week. Certainly could affect his performance, but probably not from this close in. 21 yards, but from an angle. Out of Strzok's hold, it's good. Exactly six minutes remaining in the first half here in Pasadena, California. The score, Dolphins 10, Redskins 3. Now, for the Redskins. Six minutes remaining in the first half. Here at the Rose Bowl, Super Bowl 17, the AFC champion Dolphins leading by seven. Von Schaman officially from 20 yards on that last field goal. Will kick it off. Mike Nelms to return. He had that big 76-yard kickoff return against Dallas last week. This is where that injury to Von Schaman's back will probably bother him. We probably won't see him kick the ball into the end zone unless that back is healed substantially in this last week. Right? Oh, he El Monte. First down at the 20-yard line. So Von Schaman showing that at least that back not bothering his kicking form. The Redskins down by seven will put it in play from the 20-yard line. Elsewhere today, we understand that Bob Gilder and Rex Caldwell are tied in the sixth hole of sudden death of the Phoenix Open Championship. As soon as a winner is determined, we'll have that for you. But here in Pasadena, big money at stake as well. $36,000 to the winner, and the winner will take home a total of $70,000 for the playoffs. Miami leading 10 to 3. Ball at the 20 yard line. Right and Beisman to throw. Wide open is Rick Walker. 30, 40, 45. No one covered Walker who drives out of bounds at the 47 yard line. 25 yards for Theismann and the Redskins. Rick Walker, number 88, has been coming in motion and then dipping up into the line to block. On this play, he'll come from the left side of your screen and dip up as if to block. You saw him going through right there. He's all by himself. No one picks him up in the Miami secondary, and Walker does a good job of getting extra yardage before he's finally run out of, run out of room by the Blackwood brothers. Here's Dua, as you watch him try to read the play, get screened out. Actually, Walker goes by him and was forgotten. That was his coverage. That was Dewey's coverage. Walker again on a reverse and hit from behind. Stopped at the 47-yard line, fumbled, but was already down at the 48 and picked up some of that turf <laughs> in the helmet. 
A.J. embarrassed on that last play. I really believe that that was his man. And sometimes the adrenaline will begin to pump. He comes right up on Russ Grimm, number 68, stands Grimm off at the line, and finally gets outside to make the tackle on Walker right there. Dewey, number 77, that was a big number last week. He had three interceptions and a touchdown. 77 for the Redskins. Darrell Grant had a touchdown. Riggins, close to a first down as he plows to the Miami 43-yard line. Riggins, who broke all of Gail Sayers' records at Kansas in high school, was the state champion sprinter with a 9-8 speed, compact 235-pounder. Fumbled once all year, did Riggins. Never thrown for a loss in his collegiate days. At Kansas, they're measuring for the first down. Riggo. He uh, had himself quite a week. Didn't like all the press uh, conversation at the beginning of the week, but and it had dressed in his uh, casual attire, his khakis and so forth, until late in the week when the Redskins had a party and Rigo arrived in in top hat and tails. <laughs> and Joe Gibbs said, "Well, one thing for sure, you never do know what what Riggins is going to do, how he's going to arrive." His normal attire is camouflage pants. Well, there's a uh, Rigonomics right there, about that much necessary for a first down. We're going to be looking at Jeff Bostic, the center for the Washington Redskins. He uh, dislocated the pointer finger on his right hand in practice this week. And of course that's his snapping hand. Very difficult. Third down and short. Sneak. Riggins. Here's he has it. Roan finished off the tackle. Reagan's able to lurch forward. Didn't need much. And referee Jerry Mark Bright calls time. This gives us a chance to congratulate Joe Theismann, the quarterback of the Washington Redskins, who has been named the NFL 82 Man of the Year. It's given for not only football excellence, but contributions to the community. And Joe has been so very active in many causes in the nation's capital. His daughter, Amy, first down at age three, had open heart surgery. And Joe said when she came out of the surgery and looked at him and said daddy he said his whole life changed and he has given very freely of his time off the field we congratulate him on that high honor he's certainly without question the leader of that Washington Redskin team too and I think one of the great attributes of the quarterback that kind of leadership first down the Redskins looking for a time touchdown four minutes left in the first half Heisman to Brown on the flanker screen, some nice runnings, but uh, Doug Better is able to finally get him by the jersey and tail him down at about the 39-yard line. Better's makes his off-season home up in the ski country, he likes Lake Tahoe in Montana. Shula wish he'd give up skiing. Screen pass, and of course, Bostic, one of the people that will have to get outside to help block. You see him right there, trying to stay on. Baumhauer, now he's trying to get outside. Baumhauer stayed right with him, but Bostic would not give up on the block. That's a feisty blocker there. Charlie Brown, tackled by Fetters. At the 40, and second down and seven. Riggins, the only setback. Weisman rolling. And then throwing back to Riggins. He has running room, 35 30, and he's all the way to the 25 and a first down. A 14-yard pickup for John Riggins. Riggins not usually, usually utilized as a receiver. And Joe Gibbs is pulling out the stops today. Theismann looking to this sideline and throwing back John Riggins all alone. And, oh, I don't think I'd want to try and come up and tackle him from there. Ooh. 59, Brzezinski, a big, big linebacker. Still had trouble getting it back. From the 25-yard line of Miami, Theismann to Riggins. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. It appeared the way Riggins was, that was a hold, pass. holding the football that he was going to throw. I watched Riggins during practice, and he practiced for about five minutes uh, just with that play, throwing the football, and, and has a good throwing action. as an accurate passer, but did not unload that one because his receiver was covered. Alvin Garrett was the man deep downfield, and indeed, he was blanketed well. 
Down on the line of scrimmage in the pits, the Hogs beginning to get a little advantage here for the Washington Redskins. Riggins comes out. He is a member of that Hogs uh, team, honorary unit. It's not easy to get into that club. Terrence Harmon, the only setback. Beisman scrambling. He's got running room. 20. 15. Out of bounds. First down at the 12. Joe Theismann, who rushed for 150 yards during the course of the year, gets a first down. We have two very mobile quarterbacks in this football game, and boy, that'll bring you nightmares if you're trying to play defense. You think you've got everything covered. You've got a good pass rush. You've got people covered downfield, and suddenly a mobile quarterback takes off and destroys the whole equation, turns what looks to be a good play defensively into a disaster. From the 13, a first down. To three Miami leads two minutes remaining Riggins to the seven Baumhauer McNeil finally made the tackle and that's the two minute warning two minutes left in the first half of Super Bowl 17 Miami has the lead the brain trust of the Washington Redskins led by 42 year old Joe Jackson Gibbs man on this side uh, Joe Pro and on the other side, the man who gave his offensive line the name Hogs, Joe Buell. Even in the uh, locker room there for Washington, the Hogs, their area is called Pig Alley, and it's written in crayon, <laughs> they say. Second down and four from the seven as the Redskins looking for a tying score. It's Riggins. Breaks the initial hit and has the speed to get outside and turn what would be a loss for a normal back into a gain of a couple. It'll be third down and two. Gerald Small finally ran him out of bounds. And that's one time when Riggins is not yards. difficult to tackle. If you can get him turned to the sideline, as they did on that play, and they'd love to be able to do that on every play. But there's only been one third down in this drive, Dick. They have been picking up big yardage on the Miami defense and doing a great job of mixing their plays. I'm sure Bill Arnsparg are concerned about what his offense or what his defensive troops are going through out there against this Redskin offense. That's a long one. Third and about a yard and a half. And Theismann to throw to Garrett. Touchdown! the fun bunch and their touchdown celebration. The remarkable story of Alvin Garrett continues. He caught one pass for six yards all year and then with the injury to Art Monk in the playoffs, 13 catches, four touchdowns. That's his fifth score in the playoffs. And a brilliant finesse pass by number seven, Joe Theismann, as we watch the extra point cleanly through the uprights. Theismann just lofted that ball over the top of Gerald Small. Garrett able to come up with, here it is, a chance for you to look at. Look how quickly he throws that football. Arches it up and over the top. And what does Joe Theismann think about that play? You'll have a chance to watch him. Look how quickly that ball is in the air. Drafted by San Diego out of Angelo State, went to the Giants, and eventually another free agent picked by the Redskins. He has tied the game. Alvin Garrett, now Jeff Hayes to kick off. Fulton Walker, the deep man for Miami. He had a 42-yard kickoff return the last time. From the two. 20, he's in the open again. 30, 40, he's going to go. In the book, Fulton Walker, new Super Bowl record, 98-yard kickoff return. The Redskins have not given up a return for a touchdown on a kickoff all year. In fact, one of the strengths of their team has been their ability to come down and cover kicks. 
But number 41, Fulton Walker, shows them his heels as he simply breaks outside, gets excellent blocking. A block there on Wilbur Jackson. Hayes, the man who had the last shot at him, just threw his body down, and Fulton Walker carries it into the end zone. That breaks the old mark of Rick Upchurch. The injured player was Clarence Harmon. He's okay. Here you see it again. He started left and then got a block and broke it right up the middle. There's the key block. It was thrown by 61, the All-American from University of Southern California, Roy Foster. And Walker, no one laid a hand on him. It looked a little funny to you from that angle. That was a, that's a ca camera on the other side of the field. And here's another chance to see it coming right at you from the end zone. There was the big block on the outside. Just a devastating block on Cronin. Pretty job. Walker carrying it in for points. Now Larry Anderson holds the all-time kickoff return yardage. The Pittsburgh Steelers on this field against the Rams. Remember his key returns. Walker in just two tries has a 98 and a 42-yarder. That's 140 yards already on two kickoff returns. Ewell could set a new mark. He needs just a short one now. Try for point by Von Schaumann. Don Strzok is Don holding Strzok to hold. Von Schaumann attempting the conversion. It's good. Now Larry Anderson with five returns at 162 yards in two returns. Fulton Walker is just 22 yards shy of that mark. So an explosive second quarter, 17-10 Miami. Former West Virginia Mountaineer Fulton Walker as a rookie last year. He had a kickoff return for a touchdown a Monday night game against Buffalo. And he has just set a Super Bowl mark with that 98-yard rump for a score thanks to his friends on that special teams. And in a game where some thought 17-10 could be the final, everyone's predicting a low-scoring game, it's 17-10 with a minute and a half remaining in this first half. Von Schaumann didn't know. He, a dangerous kick return man. Deep, six yards deep. He's going to take it out. Ten. And down at the 16-yard line, and with it goes the flag. Steve Scholl, 52, made the tackle for Miami, along with Woody Bennett. And now let's check the penalty. Dick, that's the first time we've ever had a kickoff run all the way back for a touchdown in the Super Bowl. So not only a record in length, but also the first of its kind. Penalty for an illegal block going against uh, the Washington Redskins here. That means they'll start even further in their own territory. It looked like they've been fighting for respect all year. In fact, that's kind of been their battle cry. Looked like they had gotten it on that touchdown, and then suddenly Miami comes raging back, puts seven more on the board quickly, and let's see what Joe Theismann has in his back pocket for this minute and 34 seconds, the last minute and 34 seconds of this first half. Todd Liebenstein, guilty of the foul. Remember, the Redskins used a timeout earlier, so they have only two remaining. Riggins, we'll see if Miami elects to use their time. Yes, they are, and as Rohn calls time, they now have two left, and of course, the Miami strategy of Don Chula would be to try to hold the Redskins deep in their own end, using their timeouts, and then get the ball near midfield on a punt. But of course, uh, Joe Theismann and company will have thoughts of maintaining possession. Dick, we've tried to show you some of the strategists in the game on the far sideline, or on the near sideline, actually. That's Bro signaling in for Joe Gibbs. Joe Gibbs will give him the plays. He signals them in. Coach Bill Arnsparger on the other side signaling in his defenses. And they go in, interestingly, to A.J. Dewey. Dewey will make the calls for the seven men up front. And Glenn Blackwood will make the calls for the four defensive backers. And those calls can change according to formation, according to down and distance, and according to the movement of Washington's offense. That's why we're seeing so much motion from Washington. They're trying to confuse that Miami defense, and they've done a pretty good job of it here in the first half. Hail high above the Rose Bowl, taking those magnificent shots, the Goodyear blimp. As a defensive player, Merlin, you hear so much talk about Bill Arnsbarger and the, the genius of the man and the, the intricate defenses of the Dolphins. Are they really that much more involved than those used by the Redskins and the other NFL teams? Well, in the Redskins defense, you're talking about one of the most complicated defenses in football, too. Uh, a defense that is very demanding. So that we really have two great defensive systems on the field today. Miami trying to hold Washington deep in its own end. Little draw play to Harmon. Oh, he's popped pretty good at the 13-yard line. A.J. Dewey 
Helped out by Baumhauer. And time called Miami with a minute and 20 seconds left in the first half. And now Theismann needs about with a ball at the 14, three yards for a first down, or the punting team will have to come on for Washington. Baumhauer able to get good penetration on that play, and Theismann obviously not wanting to make a mistake here. Your choices are rather limited. You certainly wouldn't want to get an interception. But at the same time, if you can pick up that first down, you control a football, you at least don't give Miami a chance to get their hands back on it. You've got a quick look at number 58, Kim Bocamper, who's really had his hands full on the field today with number 66, Joe Jacoby. You mentioned earlier that Joe Gibbs is a gambling head coach. When you consider the situation deep in your own end, third down and three, the last thing perhaps Miami might be looking for is a bomb. You think that uh, they might go for the long strike? They could, but one thing about Arn Sparker's defense, it is a defense that is usually on safe ground for almost any play. It's not nearly as aggressive. He won't send the blitz. He sent it maybe 5% of the time as opposed to 30% for Washington. Third down three, one minute, 20 seconds left in the half. 17-10 Miami. Quinto, the man in motion, number 30. Weisman will run for the first down and get it with a slide at the 24-yard line. That looked like a pretty good baseball slide. Theismann had plenty of practice. He was an outstanding high school player, primarily a pitcher. In fact, the Minnesota Twins offered him a baseball contract. One of the men the Hawks are trying to keep pinned down today, number 73, Bob Baumhauer. He was trying to chase from the inside. You see the blitz coming on that play. Actually, that's Rowan going inside. Baumhauer stunning behind him. Has his sights set on Theismann. George Stark, 74, pushes him away. But Theismann just outlegs Baumhauer and then hooks it into the sideline. He's safe. <laughs> First down at the 24-yard line with a minute 14 remaining. And now let's see what the Redskins do. They've got two timeouts left. Theismann, complete. Oh, what a hit. Don Warren, tackled by Mike Kozlowski who came up quickly from the secondary, Kozlowski, who in junior college, his sport was volleyball. He won a scholarship as a volleyball star and then went on to Colorado. I think he had visions of batting that ball loose and did, but after the receiver hit the ground, but that was quite a tackle. Pass thrown behind the receiver who had to turn around, put him in a very awkward position, and Kozlowski delivered it. Second down, six. Clock has been running, 38, 37, 36 seconds remaining, first half. Weisman going to go long down the middle. And a flag goes down. Chia Quinto hit early by 42, Lyle Blackwood. Remember, the Dolphins had the fewest penalties in the NFL again this year for the seventh consecutive year, the least penalized team. That was a big one. Number 42 at the 42, first down, Washington. Lyle Blackwood had excellent position. He just mistimed the hit. He leveled Giaquinta before the ball arrived. And of course, you'll have a first down at that point. A different look there. You saw how far away from Giaquinta the ball was when Blackwood hit him and how quickly the flag was in the air. 17-10. Miami leads. 30 seconds left for Theismann and the Redskins before the half to try to tie. They're showing blitz. Theismann running out of room. And completes. Turn it down. He's finally down at the 16-yard line. Timeout. Washington with 14 seconds left. Absolutely a great play by Joe Theismann. Scrambling out to his right, getting pressure from Dewey, who had blitzed from the inside. Watch Dewey coming from the inside. Theismann will look back. He's coming right now. He looks back. He sees Dewey coming and then just fires a strike. Joe Theismann has a powerful arm. He used it effectively there to get the ball to Charlie Brown. Kozlowski on his coverage. He's got this short zone. And Brown had everybody dancing, didn't he? You see what he's doing? He's using the sideline. He really had great position, but it was this strength of Theismann's arm and the throw. Watch this. A little baseball pitch there. Just zip. No chance for Kozlowski to get over and knock it away. All right, now the pressure on 
the Washington Redskins is that of time 14 seconds and they have used their last time out. They are in field goal range the ball a first down at the 16. Theismann perhaps will go for the touchdown can't afford to have a pass completed in the field of play for fear that with a tackle the time would run out before the field goal try. I think they'll probably try and hit it in the end zone Vic. try and get something down into the end zone but something hopefully that will be thrown in such a way that there's not a chance for an interception and if they can't get it into the end zone they'll go ahead and take their three points what they don't want to do here is lose the opportunity to get some points on the board everyone thought this would be a defensive struggle to find teams in that regard and yet the last four possessions have resulted in a score and Washington trying to make it five in a row get the ball you get some points. the 16. Weissman has time. And he doesn't get out of bounds. And the clock is running. I don't think they'll be able to get it stopped, Dick. I think they've Three, the opportunity to get two, it here. One. It's all over the first half. And that was the risk that the Redskins took of completing the pass in the field of play. They were unable to get out of bounds. And the Dolphins making the tackle, and Don Shula breathes a little easier. Joe Gibbs denied a three. He was looking for a seven, and that is the end of the first half. Dick Amberg and Merlin Olson back at Pasadena's Rose Bowl. You saw David Woodley earlier. His longest pass in his career, 76 yards, comes in the Rose Bowl, and 76 of those passing yards that has Miami in front, 17-10. Merlin Olson. Some interesting stats. Both quarterbacks throwing at very high completion rates. Four of six for Woodley and nine of 11 for Theismann. 16 minutes possession for Washington. 13 and over a half uh, by the Dolphins. You can see the yardage very close by the two teams. Of course, uh, turnover costly to the Dolphins early. But the big turn in that half, Dick, in special teams. We expected Washington special teams, in particular Mike Nelms, to be the dominant factor on special teams. It's been Fulton Walker. And the good coverage, good blocking of Miami special teams that's really given them the edge in this first half. Uva Von Schaman trying to squeeze a wrinkle in the ball as he'll root one off the tee. He's kicked it well into the end zone on his first half kicks. Mike Nelms in the end zone awaiting the return. Score by quarter for Miami and if you look at the third quarter of opponents you'll see that only 10 points scored against them in the third quarter that's halftime adjustments by Bill Arnsparger let's see what he has in mind for Washington kick comes down short on the wing to Clarence Harmon who gets it out to about the 28 yard line so it appeared that Von Schaumann that time kicked the ball away from Mike Nelms the flag is down as the tackle was made here's that it's going to go against Miami John Riggins of course dominant factor in the first half and one of the reasons that he is such a dominant runner is that he makes a lot of yardage after the hit. Now Riggins will find openings in the line but his tremendous strength comes from what happens after he makes the first hit. Look at it right there over the top of two players literally gets an extra two and a half three yards after the initial contact. Riggins, the kind of runner that rarely ends up going backwards. A second shot. These from earlier action in the first half. You'll see Riggins spotting the hole. Great vision. Pulling right through the, the tackle of 58 Bolt Camper over the top of two more men. That's the kind of running that brought Washington to this Super Bowl. We'll see if Riggins can continue it here in the second half. Five yards on the face mask penalty on the tackle. So Washington begins at its 33 yard line, and it's Riggins with the first call. And they get him swinging outside, and as Merlin pointed out in the first half, then he becomes somewhat normal, and Larry Gordon able to ride him out of bounds with little or no gain. If I were down there on the defensive line of scrimmage, I don't think I'd mind tackling, like, tackling John Riggins when he's going sideways. It's when he gets the shoulder square and heads up field that he's dangerous. Let's look at it here. Good adjustment by number 50, Larry Gordon. Forces him wide. Schmal, is that McNeil, I guess, 28 coming up to, to finish the job, but that's the kind of play we saw last week against the Freeman McNeil of the Jets. They haven't been able to do it consistently here today. Loss of about a half yard, and that's news when Riggins loses. Theismann to throw. Under pressure, Baumhauer has him at the 20-yard line. Third sack for the Killer B defense. I've got to wonder, Dick, if maybe that 
hand injury to Keith Bostick isn't bothering his pass blocking. We talked about it earlier. There they are, right in the pits together, number 53 and 73. Dewey coming in there to confuse the blocking. I believe it was a screen, though. It looked like a screen. They let them through. They must have knocked down the intended receiver. Theisman had nowhere to go. Gets sacked by number 73, Bob Baumhauer. Third down and 20. Diaz Quinto in motion. Theisman needs big yardage. Incomplete. Over the middle. That's where Theisman likes to go. Intended for Charlie Brown. And McNeil and Blackwood, good coverage. And Miami will get the ball. The Redskins with the Baumhauer sack forcing Theisman back. And on fourth down and 20, Hayes will kick from around his own 13-yard line. The Dolphins' dangerous return man is Tommy Vigorito at the 36. Hayes has gotten off some excellent kicks on the day. That's well above his normal average. They're expecting the block here. Ten men on the line of scrimmage for Miami. Remember, they blocked the punt against the Jets last week. Short. Flags are down. Vigorito comes all the way to his 46-yard line to make the fair catch. Flag is thrown where you would expect a illegal man downfield, a man releasing too soon. If that's the case, Dick, I think they'll refuse it because they got a they got a great field position out of that short punt by Hayes. Illegal block below the waist, number 41 on the run back. First down. Bolton Walker. The man who is detected with a penalty, and it's a first down then for Miami. Miami at its 31-yard line. That was a 31-yard punt by Hayes. Kind of a mixed bag for number 41, Fulton Walker. As you see him from the right side of your camera there, going at the legs of number 86, Didier. Clint Didier, illegal block, 15-yard penalty against the Dolphins. Well, one minute gone, third quarter. Miami with the ball for the first time in the second half, leading 17 to 10. Little trap block. And look at Franklin break through to the 41-yard line, a gain of about 10 before the last man, Mark Murphy and Rich Malak, can make the tackle. Chance to watch some of the play down in the pits. You'll see the blocking to the outside here. Let's watch it. The ball, the trap by number 60, Taves, will be on the near side of your screen. Watch Taves just step out behind, gets a trap right there, opens the way for Andre Franklin. Some good blocking inside by Miami's offensive line. They clear the way. Second short. One yard to go for the first down. Tony Nathan spinning, and I don't believe he made the first down. Daryl Grant, a right tackle, who had uh, his dream come through, his first touchdown. College or pro came last week against Dallas with that deflected ball by Manley. He gathered it in and ran 10 yards for the score. We've been lucky with the rain so far, Dick, but looking out toward the mountains here, there are some clouds gathering and a little bit of dark darkness coming in. We may yet get a drop of rain on this beautiful day. Third down, less than a yard. Woody Bennett joins Andre Franklin in the Miami backfield. And appeared to be a mix-up. It might even have been a fumble, or was that just uh, the quarterback Woodley going over the top? Whatever. It's going to be close. They're marking it at the 41-yard line. Let's go down and look at the line surge as we get a chance to watch Dave Butts, Daryl Grant, and the rest of the troops on the inside. 57 Stevenson and Taves and Kuchenberg trying to make room for Woodley. They got some room, but that Redskin defense just swarming to the ball. They'll measure it. Very close, I believe they got it. It is a first down for Miami. Defense against the run. Washington, one of the better teams in the league. Miami, the best in the league against the pass, 24th versus the run. But when you got the few yards that you were able to earn against that pass defense of Miami, you had to run it. You had no other choice. People just simply electing to take the easier of the two evils. They were tough against the run, but much tougher against the pass. By just a couple of inches. And Woodley on first down to throw. Good protection, and he's going long for Harris. No, he's out of bounds. Juggling the ball. A fine try by Harris. He ran that deep out against Jarris White. Watching Woodley in practice the other day, one of the problems that he has is 
doesn't quite have the timing on that throw. Accurate throw, but threw it just a little too far to keep the receiver in bounds, although he was able to get one toe in. Had he been able to drop the other toe, that would have been a good reception. Working one-on-one -on, -one on Jarris White, number 45, they feel that if they can isolate him one-on-one, -on -one, they can beat him. Second and ten, the give is to Franklin. Miami hoping to catch Washington looking pass. The Redskins read it well. Grant on the bottom of the pile. It'll be third down and six for Don Chula. 53 years of age, 20th year of coaching in the NFL. He has tied Tom Landry today. This is his fifth Super Bowl appearance. One thing that Chula will not do is beat himself. He runs a low-risk offense. He usually has control of what's happening on the field and when the tools are working for Shula he's a mean signal caller third and six for Woodley under pressure down the middle to Rose at the 40 incomplete had Rose caught that ball that had touchdown written on it he was behind everyone Juris White was able to get up in front of his vision had that pass been in Rose's arms that spelled trouble for Washington Perry Brooks Dexter Manley both getting pressure in there but that pass came dangerously close to being a completion. Good play, and let's pat him on the back. Number 45, Jarris White. Tom Oros to punt for the Miami Dolphins. Punted just once in the first half for 42 yards. Nelms is back at the 15. Takes his time and delivers a short kick. Nelms. 25, 30, and up to the 36-yard line. So Oros with that extra time, and then with a very short kick of just 30 yards. Nelms gets 11 back on the return, and the Redskins have decent field position. Oros still suffering from a pulled groin. He got it when he was trying to kick off last week, worried about Von Schaman. It's really affected his performance. Let's look at the hang time of that kick. He waits a little bit, but he just does not have a snap in that leg. Very short, very bad kick. That could be dangerous against a return man like Nelms. They like to get over four on the hang time. Lion coach of the Redskins, the boss hog, they call him Joe Bugle, and his big offensive line. The Hogs try him out, open the way for Riggins or protect for Theismann. Joe Gibbs will call on that offensive line now. That's Papa Hog, number 74. You see the size of that big line. Boy, they grind you up. That's what they'd like to do to Miami's line right now. They start from their 36-yard line. Weisman screens it to Warren, the tight end. 40, and he's out to the 43. Well disguised by Theismann. The Dolphins thought they had him. And Theismann at the last minute dumped it off to his tight end. Seven-yard gain. Brzezinski made the tackle. We've talked about the quickness of Stevenson, the center for Miami. Jeff Bostic out to lead that screen, doing a great job in the middle for the Redskins, although he has had trouble one-on-one -on -one against Baumhauer. But he and Dean out to lead that seven-and-a-half, eight-yard gain on the little screen pass. He has the first down at the 47. There have been some great nicknames in football, Merlin. The U played on the fearsome foursome and the doomsday defense. Hogs not exactly up with the rest, but they uh, have their identity and they're proud of it. Let's look at George Stark on the far side, number 74. He'll just come right off the line and freeze betters, number 75. All you need is a standoff. When you've got a runner like Riggins, you just need to stop those defensive linemen. Riggins will come up in there, and then they can't stop him before he makes a good game. That's a dynamite combination. A big, strong offensive line coming off in zone blocking, and a runner like John Riggins. First down from the Redskin 47. Here's a little reverse. Alvin Garrett, he's got running room. 40, 30, one man to beat. Small gets him out of bounds at the... Just a great play 
Great call by Gibbs. Reverse to Alvin Garrett. They're going to take the ball first to the outside and then bring it back across. The critical block thrown by Grimm, number 68. And you'll see it on the right-hand side of your screen now. On Larry Gordon, right there. Grimm bumped him out of the way, opened the way for Garrett. And first and goal from the nine. That was a 44-yard reverse run then by Garrett. So from the nine, Riggins hit by Roan after short yardage. It'll be second and goal, and in come the extra receivers sent in by Joe Gibbs. He'll bring out Riggins and the running crew, and now second and goal from inside the eight. He looks for pants. The tough thing that that does to you, you have to change your thinking defensively. You really have to shift gears. You go from a power running situation to a scat back and a passing situation. The Redskins clamoring for a tying touchdown. Second and goal. Heisman to Warren hit immediately at about the three yard line. Roan and Glenn Blackwood made the tackle. What a great catch by Don Warren, number 85. We said earlier he has become a, a very fine receiver during this season. Watch him adjust to the football. A great job of just getting his hands on it as the ball was thrown behind him and then hanging onto the football as he takes a double pop from Ernest Roan, 55 and 50 and 47, Glenn Blackwood. Third and goal at the three yard line. Heisman incomplete to Alvin Garrett and he's calling for a penalty no flag similar to the touchdown scored by the Redskins with two minutes remaining in the first half exactly the same play they threw it just like they did before I think thinking that McNeil may still be a little woozy from that shot he took to the head the ball's in the air already but McNeil spots the football adjusts to it comfortably the ball just over the hands of, of Garrett as he leaped into the air. Ooh, almost a successful replay of the scoring toss earlier. 20-yard attempt by Mosley. It is good. So both on Shaman and Mosley get the short 20-yard field goals. And with a timeout, eight minutes and nine seconds left in the third quarter. The score is now Miami 17, the Redskins 13. Jeff Hayes to kick it off. Bolton Walker with 23 yards would set a new Super Bowl record, but he won't get the ball. It's Lyle Blackwood on the short kick, and after the bobble, returns to the 28-yard line. Now, the Redskins, without question, kicking away from Fulton Walker, who had both a 42 and a record 98-yard return in the first half. 17-13. The Dolphins of Don Shula lead as Shula goes for his third consecutive Super Bowl win, losing his first two, that memorable Super Bowl three when he lost to the Jets, and then he lost his first against uh, Dallas as the Miami coach, then winning against these Redskins ten years ago and winning again the following year. So he's two and two. Little draw to Nathan. Read well by Daryl Grant, who drops him in his tracks. Number 77, Daryl Grant, got into this lineup because of an injury to Perry Brooks, who we've seen just returned from an operation on his knee. But uh, Daryl Grant's done a fine job, of course, will be remembered for that fantastic run that he made last week into the end zone. Setting off a celebration and RFK that could probably still be heard echoing back in Washington. Rich Diana, Rich the ball game. number 33, a rookie at running back. Second and ten. Woodley knocked down by Jarris White. Nicely done by White. Took it right out of the hands of Duriel Harris. Jarris White doing a good job of cutting across. Grab your helmet, take it down on the field, give you the feel of the game as Duriel Harris will be coming right into your lap. Watch Jarris White react to the football. The ball thrown a fraction late, and Duriel had to wait for it. Jarris White able to react to the ball, get there in time to cut it off. Had Woodley cut it loose a second earlier, would have been a completion. Throw out of the shotgun, third and ten. 
Vigorito in motion. And deflected incomplete. Intended for Vigorito. Knocked away nicely by Tony Peters. And the Redskin fans have something to cheer about. David Woodley had been throwing the ball very well, extremely well. A couple of passes right there that were not thrown well. The first thrown late, he hitched on the second ball, sensing the coverage. I think had he thrown it properly, he might have been able to complete the second one as well. Horace to kick the dangerous Nelms back at the 30-yard line. Mark Denard, no, it's uh, Kuchenberg snapping the ball. He stopped. He thought they're coming after it, and they are. Another bad kick. Nelms at the 35, 40, 45, and he's to the 47-yard line. The Musco Portable Sports Lights, over 450,000 watts of lighting power. They've come on as the sun has uh, set here. The Rose Bowl, five banks of lights mounted atop 150-foot cranes. They fold up to be completely portable, helping us to enjoy even a better television picture. Dolphin defense watches Washington break huddle at its 47-yard line. Washington has moved the ball effectively against the top-rated defense in the NFL. Riggins and enough fake reverse, and Riggins keeps it and did not fool Bob Rodzinski, who made a solid tackle at the 49, a gain of two. Good play by Brodzinski. He plays the run as well as any linebacker in the game and is gradually adjusting to playing the pass, but usually is out of the lineup for sure passing downs. Riggins again being pushed toward the sideline, not nearly as effective when he's not headed upfield. And looking for a little extraterrestrial support. Second down and eight Redskins at midfield. Riggins. Attracts another crowd led by Ernest Grone. Also in on the play. Number 58, Kim Camper. Third down, so the Redskins bring in Harmon and Giaquinto. Walker and Riggins go out. Let's look at Joe Jacoby, number 66. 295 pounds, six foot seven. Again, working to try and neutralize number 58, Bo Camper. Had his head down on that play, and you saw Bo Camper slip off the block, but you saw the tremendous power of Joe Jacoby. Had he been able to keep his head up, he would have taken Bo Camper downfield five yards. Third and a long five for Theismann. Incomplete to Charlie Brown. Don McNeil, good coverage. Had Brown caught it. McNeil was right there anyway. So Theismann and the Redskins are stopped at the 50-yard line, and Jeff Hayes comes in. Theismann, who entered Notre Dame as one of 14 quarterbacks. Charlie Brown, 87, comes in in motion, turns around, comes out the other way. McNeil keeping track of him. Now he fakes to the inside, rolls outside, but you saw the feet slip out from underneath him. That's a timing pattern, and that little slip cost him the reception. Hayes to kick, Vigoretto back at the 10. Hayes is rooted to dot well. Vigoretto at the 6. 10. And he returns to the 18-yard line. A game of about 12 on the punt return. Hayes has hit the ball well, 42 yards. Good ship, Columbia. High over the Rose Bowl, helping us enjoy this Super Bowl coverage. Boy, the weatherman was so kind. Oh, we were lucky. Oh, we were. You considered how hard it rained and how hard they were forecasting possible rain for today. Skies have cleared, and for the athletes, they could not have had a better football day. Fans as well. Crowd pulling on the sweaters and jackets now as the sun is set. Miami begins from its 18, leading 17-13, five and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Andra Franklin to about the 23, a gain of five. Behind the block of Bob Kuchenberg, number 67, the veteran for the Miami Dolphins. Let's go in and look at Bob Kuchenberg. Right here in the middle of your screen, number 67. He'll just be blowing out on this play. Kuchenberg, a very active and aggressive guard, has been a good player for many, many years. He's working on Daryl Grant, 77. Knocked Grant back, able to, able to do a good job there. Yeah, 35 years.
years of age, 13 years. He's been in every playoff for Miami, all three of their Super Bowls. And a good redskin read on Franklin as Grant that time, along with Manley, stopped the fullback of the Dolphins after just a short gain at the 24, bringing up third down and four. Richie Pettibone has certainly done a great job with this Redskin defense. They're very aggressive, and when you look at all the changes he has made and all the new people that have been put into that defense, they have had a year that uh, that has to go down in the record books. Rick. They only have 17 men back from the team two years ago. He's totally rebuilt it under Bobby Bethard, the general manager. Out of the shotgun, third and four. Going long, too long. Doriel Harris. Covered well by Vernon Dean, and Miami's going to get it back. Mark Murphy faked the blitz, coming all the way from his safety position to the line. He forced the audible by David Woodley, and then dropped back into coverage. Woodley, assuming it was a blitz, had gone to the pattern one-on-one, -on -one, but he didn't get that kind of coverage. Ended up overthrowing the ball. So Nelms drops back to his 35, anticipating the kick from number three, Tom Orris. Helms from Baylor went to the Canadian League. Now back to his 29, 35. Look at the balance. Still on his feet to the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. Joe Gibbs has said about Nelms, he's never seen a man with greater hands that in practice he'll actually catch the ball like a baseball player behind his back and still field it cleanly. Well, I asked Richie Pettibone, he's listed as a as a second defensive back, and I said, why don't you have that guy on the field? He said, well, we did for a while. We put him out there, but he hit so hard that he hurt his shoulders, and he said we couldn't afford to have him off the special team, so we had to ease up on him, couldn't let him play defense. Now you can see how hard he was hitting carrying the ball. 47-yard kick by Oris, a 10-yard return, trailing by four points. Washington with the ball at its 38. Weisman over the middle. Intercepted by Dewey, A.J. Dewey. That's four for him in the last two weeks. And the Miami fans chant Dewey. It almost sounds like a buoy. We had not heard a lot of A.J. Dewey this First half and early in the second half, but he makes his presence felt here. His height, he's about 6'5", gave him an advantage here. There he is right in the center of your picture. He's been moving around, trying to confuse the blocking on the line. Reads the pass. Now watch him go up in the air. Great reaction to the ball. Batted it. Looks much like the one he carried in last week. Big, big play by Dewey. Don Warren was the intended receiver, and he was open downfield, but Dewey, in six years, had only two interceptions, and he has four in the last two weeks. So from the 48 with the first turnover, Woodley going deep for Cephalo. Almost took it away from the Redskin, Jarris White, who had coverage on him. Cephalo timing his leap, a flag down. Someone appeared to be offside. Appeared to Dexter Manley had stepped off before the snap, but what a great play by Cephalo. Timed it perfectly, went up. That's Take a quick peek at the line of scrimmage. The top of your screen, you just see the hand. Dexter Manley eager to get to the quarterback. Just moved far enough Offside. to head over the helmet. Number 72, defense, first down. So Manley from Oklahoma State, who has been outspoken about his predictions in this game, a 1983 version of Joe Namath. They say he gets better every play. He has really come on this season. Great speed. He can run a 4 5 4 six hundred for a man that size. That's that's tremendous. First down and five. Woodley. Out of bounds and taking that one giant step to gain another yard. Does Woodley? Jarris White bumped him out. Close to a first down for Woodley on the scramble. Woodley wanting to throw that football, elected to run, and a fascinating play on the sideline. It looked like he was out. He realized he had to get more for, for a possible first down and lunged with that final step. Got very close to the marker. In fact, they're going to measure it. Time remaining, 335, third quarter. Don Shula would love to be able to control the football, get some more points on the board here. It is a first down as Woodley was able to steal an extra yard and a half with that giant step. Don Strzok standing behind Shula. Been 
Shula's ace in the hole for a long time. And one of the things that Shula says about Strzok, not only is he willing to play, but he's also a great help on the sideline. Let's watch the play by Woodley, though. Woodley, a great runner. Perhaps as fast as any player on the team. Now watch him as he goes to the sideline, jumps over the top. Now the step. <laughs> Smart football. And another yard and a half in the first down. It's been Woodley throughout the playoffs, all four games. Strzok has not taken a snap other than to hold on conversions and field goals. Franklin has hit hard at the line of scrimmage by Dave Butts. And when you run into the 295-pound Butts, <laughs> you often don't move anywhere but back. Dave Butts has been a pillar of strength for these Redskins all year. Reads the run, reacts about as well as any man in football. Watch him here. He just slips by Taves. No chance for Taves there as Butts is in the backfield. Actually did not wrap his hands on Franklin, but hit Franklin so hard that Andre had nowhere to go. Lost a yard, second down 11. Butts, a 7E width on his shoe. He could stamp out small brush fires with those feet. Woodley to Cephalo. Intercepted by the Redskins' Murphy at the five-yard line. Murphy, who had two during the course of the year and led the Redskins with seven last season. Mark Murphy has a way of being in the right place at the right time. You saw the congratulations from Pettibone on this sideline from his defensive teammates. Chance for you to watch number 29 in action. Quick read on the play, but it's his alertness to the bouncing ball that gives him the interception here. The ball hit right there by both the receiver and the defender. But what a great athletic maneuver by number 29, Mark Murphy. Vernon Dean was the man who made the play. Riggins, oh, he was staggering forward. And when he went down, there wasn't a Miami uniform between Riggins and the goal line. Let's go back to that earlier play and watch Vernon Dean, number 32, one-on-one -on -one in coverage with Cephalo. Cephalo turns him around. Dean covers tremendous ground to get back and bounce that football. And again, the great interception by Murphy. Riggins nine yards on the first down carry, second and one. 17-13 Miami leading Washington with two minutes left in the third quarter. And there's the first down for the Redskins as Riggins powers straight ahead. Ernest Roan made the hit. We're talking to the two Blackwood brothers who never shy away from a little physical action. I asked them about whether they were thinking about tackling John Riggins. They said, that's the kind of thing you don't think about. You just go up there and do it. <laughs> no, if you think, you might become sensible. That's why you might not even go up there. Yeah, you might say, take me out. Yeah. Redskins send Walker, the tight end, way out to the right. Now the other tight end, Warren, moves to anchor the line, and they bring Brown in motion. Beisman batted in the air. Almost a touchdown for Kim Camper. Oh, my. Joe Theismann playing defensive back on his own pass as it was batted into the air. Camper, a former linebacker, now playing in the defensive line at defensive end, has had a tough day today. But watch him here as he almost comes with a big play. Theismann cannot get the pass off. Rolls back against the grain. The batted ball there. Now watch Theismann go up and knock it out of the hands of Kim Bocamper. And Bocamper said, it was my touchdown. Great play by Theismann. As it appeared, Bocamper indeed had six. Zonka said when they first uh, signed Bocamper that he'd make a good fullback, and he was trying to do just that then. Look at this play. Clarence Harmon has a first down at the 30-yard line. That was the Redskins' 30th rushing play of this game. And look what they do when they run the ball 30 times. They're 21 and 2 in the last 30. 0 and 7 rushing under. Of course, if you're losing a game, you aren't going to run it as much as throw it. But if you believe in that statistic, then there's high hopes for the Redskin faithful. Unfortunately, if you look at the scoreboard, they're still down by four. They'd love to turn this drive into points. They began back at the five on the Murphy interception. First down at the 30. Riggins. Whoa. Right into Baumhauer's grasp. Maybe a yard gain. 
Baumhauer, who has a, a parent, Ralph, said, does he talk? He said, yeah, he talks blue streak, but it's all in Spanish. He and says, I've got to take a course so I can understand what he's saying to me. Chance to look at the action in the pits as Baumhauer manhandles Keith Bostick, number 53, stands him up, and then takes Riggins on. That's a tremendous play by the nose tackle, Bob Baumhauer. Riggins still got almost two. Flanker screen to Brown, and he's out of bounds at the 36. It'll be third down and about four. Theisman looks at the clock, and that is the end of the third quarter here in Pasadena, California. Like a couple of expectant fathers, Shula pacing the sidelines, Gibbs irritated. There's Bill Arnsparger. Of course, he's made his defensive call. Let's see who'll win this battle of strategy. Riggins. He's going to go all the way unless Blackwood can catch him, and he can't. Tremendous play, but the key to this play was motion. The motion man coming across and turning around, Don McNeil, cornerback, running with him, slipped and fell. His responsibility to get back to the outside to contain Riggins. He could not get there until the last second. Riggins ran through an arm tackle and carried it all the way into the end zone. John Riggins, the seventh man to run for over 100 yards in the Super Bowl, the first from the National Conference, and he caps it off with a 42-yard touchdown on a fourth and inches. And now the try for a point by Mosley. Let's see if we can see McNeil slip. Now he'll be coming across at the bottom of your picture. There, whoops. There he is right th there. He's coming back into your picture. He got back late and just barely got his arms around the waist of John Riggins. You can't tackle Riggins high. And you can't tackle him with just arms. You've got to get some bodies on top of him. Watch him run right through this tackle and on into the end zone. The Redskins lead by three. Bolton Walker, he returned one, 98 yards. He's at the nine. He's not going to go far this time. The Redskins stop him at the 22 and steal the ball in the process. But Charles McDaniel going into the end zone, but the ball was whistled dead back at the 22-yard line. Dick, let's go back to that play and watch Don McNeil as he comes across right here in the middle of your picture. Now watch what happens to him when the motion man turns to go the other way. Look what happens to McNeil. Now McNeil gets up off the ground and is quick enough to get back into the play, but only to get a handful of Riggins, and that's not enough. And that's the completion of the longest touchdown run in Super Bowl history, 43 yards, not the longest run. Tom Maddy went 58 yards in Super Bowl three, but not for a touchdown. Riggins gassing up on the sidelines with 0-2, and now it's Miami. Franklin climbing ahead to the 25-yard line. Neil Oklowitz on his 27th birthday, the middle linebacker, number 52, to make the tackle. And now the pressure even more shifted to the shoulders of the big men in the pits. Miami will try and hammer it out. They've got to look for Shula to try and make Washington respect the run again try and hit the ball deep but they have not had success with the passing game here in the second half. That's an understatement Berlin. Woodley has been shut out in the second half. A reverse to Harris and he has some blockers but no one got number 55 Kaufman and he slows him down at the 26 yard line. Mel Kaufman, two Dolphins ran by him, and Harris gains only a couple. Four substitutions into the game as they anticipate pass by the Miami offense. Mel Kaufman coming off. He'll repl be replaced by Monty Coleman, number 51. Kaufman reacting quickly to that reverse. Got outside, missed the tackle, but had plenty of help from his friends to keep it from getting away from him. 
One of some 28 free agents on this Redskin team. Kaufman, third and five, Miami. Incomplete. A flag is down. We'll see if the Redskins were offside. Cephalo, the intended receiver. An all out blitz as Mark Murphy screeched to the inside, but the penalty is against the Miami Dolphins. They'll refuse it. They'll force him to punt the ball away. Redskins have dominated the second half, and they have held Miami's offense to only 30 yards. And lead 20 to 17, and they're about to get the ball back. Jarris White over to say ball no, start. we don't want it. Number 60, offense, third down again. Third they down. Took the and penalty? Ten. No, they didn't have a choice. Oh, that's right. Ball <laughs> start. Sorry. The play was whistled in. I was looking away up here. I was saying, wait a minute. But they don't have a choice on that one. So third down and a long 10. Woodley is 0 for 7 in the second half. Out of the shotgun. <laughs> for Harris, incomplete. Harris had trouble with his footing, and he hasn't gotten up yet out the 47-yard line. I think he's all right, but he took a shot there. Woodley trying to loft the ball over the top, a pattern that sent Harris downfield and then cut back to the sideline. And Orris is going to try and kick it away. He has not been able to kick the ball well today, Dick. Nelms is back at the 40. Eight minutes and 58 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Still a field goal game, but the Redskins certainly not only have the men, but have dominated. Morris takes his time and then sends a short kick anyway to Nelms. 50, 45, he's all the way to the Miami 41-yard line. That's a new Super Bowl record for Nelms, his sixth punt return. And Don Strzok, he has not played in the playoffs for Miami during the course of the year. The cry in the Orange Bowl was Wood Strzok. If Woodley couldn't do it, Strzok often did. Sheila has complete confidence in him, and of course this game is made to order for him. It's become a passing game for Miami. They're not winning the battle in the pits. They're going to have to go to the air. First, they have to stop Riggins. And it seems that Riggins is a better runner in the fourth quarter as he wears down the defenses with those charges. Gordon made the tackle, but not until Riggins added another six yards to his total. He amazes me, Dick. Those are not young legs. He just keeps charging. 33-year-old John Riggins, the Kansas farmer. Second and four, clock running to the 820 mark. The Redskins leading for the first time in the game, 20 to 17. Riggins again. Ooh. Burrowing for what appears to be close to another first down. The Hogs moved that whole Miami defense back about three yards on that play, and then Riggins just helped carry the stack a little further on his own. Rowan makes the stop. John Riggins. Super Bowl record for rushing is held by Franco Harris of the Steelers, 158 yards. And Riggins is only a handful away, five yards from that total now. And of course, with the battle in the pits going their way, Joe Gibbs will continue to have Boss Hog Joe Bugle tell his troops to Third. eke him out some more in there. Third and less than the yard. Well, the hog is not exactly a, a peacock, but a lot of folks, important folks in the nation's capital, have been wearing those t shirts. They're liable to really go in a hurry this week, the way that line is moving back Miami's defense. Well, Dick, uh, certainly Washington, Ronald Reagan is president, but if Washington wins, Reagan's may be king. <laughs> Third down and a yard. Remember the last time in short yardage, Riggins went 43 yards for a touchdown. Riggins again has the first down at the 30-yard line. And the clock continues to run. 7.25 left. Otis Wansley, number 39. 
going to lead Riggins up into line. Watch him now. He's one fine blocker. Riggins right on his tail, driving up inside. A chance for you to see the block. Watch it right here as Wansley just levels the linebacker. Ernest Roan knocks him right flat on his back, and Riggins takes advantage of that kind of blocking to pick up the first down. First down at the 30. Less than seven minutes left. Riggins again. And the tireless fullback of the Redskins on his 34th rush. He has been active in more than 50% of his team's plays today. And with that, he has just set a Super Bowl record of 162 yards. No question about the big man in this game has been the same big man in the playoffs, John Riggins. They've taken advantage of Kim Bocamper, number 58. But they also run over number 73, Baumhauer, on this play. Bostic doing a good job. But it's Jacoby on the outside who's just using his size advantage to power over the top of Bocamper. Riggins up the middle. And for one of the few times today, he stopped cold. It does seem to me that uh, when you get Riggins off tackle, that is where he feels most comfortable. And of course, he has big tackles blocking the way. Stark at 6'5", 260 on the right side, and Jacoby 6'7", and 295 on the left side. And when they need the yardage, they need it desperately, they've tended to go to that left side. Going in behind, number 66, Jacoby, and number 68, Russ Grimm. Standing ovation for Riggins as they announce Super Bowl record, most rushes, most yards. Time out, called by Washington's Joe Theismann on third down and two. He doesn't feel comfortable without Riggins in that huddle with him. Let's look at the run that broke the record as he goes right up into the middle. And ironically, one of the worst runs of his day picked up only a fraction of a yard, and yet it was enough to take him over the top. Five minutes and 31 seconds left. Now the pressure on Miami's defense. They have to think about stopping the Redskins and holding them to at least a field goal. If Washington should march it in and score, then Miami needs two scores to win today. And time is running out on Don Shula. Don Strzok continues to warm up on the sideline, and I'm sure that Shula is thinking aerial attack as he gets into the game. This man is thinking get the ball between the uprights. Mosley, I talked to him the other day, said he's out of his slump, feeling better about himself. Of course, after that great run he had earlier in the year, I suppose it was natural that there would be a letdown. The Rickonomics today, 35 rushes, 162 yards. Mosley hoping that it's an extra point try that he'll be called to perform. Dick, it's interesting that the first addition to the Hogs Club, their exclusive fraternity, was John Riggins. After he'd broken the, the record of, down in Tampa, they said, you finally earned the right to be in this club. They'd let the tight ends join because they've proved themselves, but those are the only ones that belong. Nobody else. No good-looking quarterbacks or wide receivers. <laughs> Inside handoff Ooh. and another first down as it's Clarence Harmon. <laughs> Harmon gives the Redskins four more downs and the clock running 515 left. And Washington just may put too much pressure on Strzok. He may not have enough time to be the relief pitcher today. In the first half of this game, Don Strzok spent his time on the sideline. Talking to Don Shula, taking his clipboard, keeping track of things, trying to keep in the game, eliminate plays as he watched them. He says he eliminates plays from the plan that he knows will not work. So when he gets in there, he has an idea of what will go. He'll need that knowledge in this game. Leading by three, Reagan slips, still gets up and gets a yard or two. Boy, the punishment that he has taken oh, and he has dealt game. out. But when you think of the superlatives, a man having a great running day and he's approaching 40 carries the kind of punishment his own body is taking well, he loves to carry the football interesting he does not like to block he said it takes more energy out of me to block than it does to carry the football I'd rather carry the football 40 times than block 20 times and carry it 20 times Riggins comes out Uba von Shaman and that Miami bench quiet second down and nine 406, 405 left. 
And it's Harmon. They try to catch Miami looking for the pass, but read well by Baumhauer and Brzezinski. It'll be third down and about nine. The strategy here would be apparently not to make a mistake, stay in the middle of the field. If they have to take the field goal, get the three points, force Miami to score seven to go ahead on the scoreboard. Mosley, it'll be well within his range if they do try the field goal. And one of the season ending polls was voted the NFL player of the year for his tremendous kicking. Let's see whether Theisman will throw this one. He will. And third down and long. Rolling, looking. It's Brown. He's inside the 10. I think he's got the first down. Going to be close. See where they mark it. Again, the running ability of Joe Theisman makes this play possible. It looked like he would have had a chance on the run to make that first down. Rolling out strongly to that side. Charlie Brown has a one-on-one -on -one situation on Gerald Small, number 48. Watch him coming back inside here. Now he'll break outside. Theisman running with him. That's almost a pick play for the two defensive backs. Charlie Brown able to get enough yardage to pick up the first down. First and goal at the nine-yard line. So the top defense in the National Football League, the Miami Dolphins, are being run over by Riggins in the second half. And here he comes to the six-yard line. And the clock is running again with 3.13 left. Joe Gibbs and the Washington Redskins, a team that lost its first five games under Gibbs a year ago. And then it put together a remarkable string, a team made up of players selected free agents, those who were available through waivers that no one else wanted. And it, indeed, the spirit of the team was glad to be underdogs today. That's what they feel about themselves as a unit. They played that way and played so very well. 245 left from the six. Riggins stopped at the six. Now fumbled the ball. And Miami, was he down? He, he was, was down. down. Roan came up with the football, but after Riggins was down, and look who was on him, Theismann, who made a big, maybe the biggest defensive play of the game when he had a pass deflected and he knocked it away from Bo Camper. Would have been a sure Miami touchdown. Joe Gibbs breathing a little sigh of relief over there as he realizes that they have dodged a bullet. Riggins rarely fumbles the football, and this one does not pop out until John hits the ground. Well, <laughs> maybe we'd better look at that. The official's ruling it's down, and the official had a good view of that play. A second look at it. You can check it for yourself. Leg on the ground. Very tight. Another look at it. Oh, well, his knee was down. His knee was down when he fumbled the football. Dick, I hate to argue with you, but I think maybe that was a fumble. And I'm sure that uh, Miami will look at that one many times on their projectors. And but we'll the official did have a good angle. We'll give him the credit for that. And we'll look at it again. It's his knee down when he loses the football. If, the if the ball bounces loose as he hits the ground, it is not a fumble. But that is the question. I don't believe it is. I think the ball is out before his knee hits the ground. That replay appears to be a fumble, but we get to look at it in slow motion. That's the two-minute warning. Two minutes to go. 20 to 17. Washington leads Miami. Joe Theismann and John Riggins. The offensive spear throwers and spear carrier. Third and goal from the seven. Feisman. Will he run it? No. He throws it for a touchdown. Charlie Brown. Dick, that's the final stage in Washington's game plan. Riggins right, Riggins left, throw to a smirk. Mosley kicks it through, and with 155 left, the Washington Redskins lead the Miami Dolphins 27 to 17.
Charlie Brown hanging on to the souvenir. He had eight touchdown catches during the course of the year to lead the Redskins and earn a trip to the Pro Bowl as a veritable rookie. And that, of course, the planned rollout by Theismann gave him a little extra time, a little extra time for Charlie Brown to get open. And what about the reaction of the quarterback, Joe Theismann? I think we can predict that. He had to wait for the official's call. A bit delayed. Was he inbounds? And Dick, I think the ruling was that he was knocked out of bounds, that his feet would have come down in bounds had he not been knocked out by the defensive man. Yeah, speaking of knockouts, the Dolphins aren't out on a count of 10, but they're certainly on one knee where the count at about eight because they have only a minute 55 seconds left and they have to score twice. And of course that time eating drive, most of it on the ground, Riggins behind his fellow Hogs really stole the clock away from Don Strzok and Don Shula. And they've just scored on that pass against the toughest team to score against throwing the football in the NFL this year. So they have proven themselves, especially in the second half, totally dominating the game. And now it shows on the scoreboard. Walker deep. Golden Walker, 98-yard touchdown. One of the big plays for the Dolphins in the first half. Exactly through that avenue, he's out to the 35-yard line. Walker will write his name into the Super Bowl record book with that return. His total yardage now 181 yards today. He erases Larry Anderson's name, the Steelers' fine return man of three years ago. Don Strock is the quarterback. And for the Dolphins, they not only have to get a touchdown, they have to somehow get the ball back and get at least the three to tie. Riggins, 181 yards. Out gaining the Dolphins and total yards, Washington almost two to one. Former President of the United States, Jimmy Carter. Vigorito. His first carry today, and the Redskins, as they have been most of the second half, ready for everything. A short gain, Tony McGee in for the pass rush. Of course, the Dolphins figuring that uh, Redskins would look past, hope to catch them off guard, but it was a gain of only four. Strzok, the veteran from Virginia Tech. Down the middle. Intercepted. Yes, Tony Peters. No, now they say he trapped it. He trapped it. Peters from Oklahoma. Remember Cleveland Brown diving, trying to pick off that pass. Intended for Jimmy Cephalo. Dick, we looked at the equation early in our pregame. We looked at it again at the top of the show. If Riggins could run, if Miami could not shut him down, the balance of power would turn in Washington's favor. And it certainly has in this second half. Go down for Schrock and the Dolphins. He can't hit Vigorito. And now it's fourth down, and with this play, if Miami, Miami unable to come up with first down yardage, the Redskin fans will start singing that fight song. John Riggins, what a tremendous performance for him today. He did everything they asked of him, Dick. Stopped a few times in the first half, but came back when the going got tough, rooted in behind his hogs. You know, the, they say that the name hog implies that you just get down there in the mud and get the job done. And uh, the Hawks have done that today. They've rooted it up. Now Strzok looking for a play that will keep the ball in Miami's grasp. He doesn't get it, and that'll do it. Now for the Redskins, they need to only consume a minute and 12 seconds, and the Super Bowl rings will be theirs. Let's look quickly at some of Riggins' performance from the game, from earlier action. Chance to, to see what John Riggins has meant to this team today. Run right there through the arms of tacklers. He's been able to break tackles all day long. And that, of course, the key for this Washington Redskin offense. Able to dominate the clock and finally the scoreboard. Redskins take over at the 39 yard line. Riggins accepting the congratulations and offering them along the sidelines. Unquestionably the most valuable player in this game. 
Clarence Harmon in his stead is to the 36 yard line. Miami calling a timeout, but I'm afraid it's futile now. 106 left on the clock. It's it's academic for Don Shula and his fine Miami Dolphin team. Bill Arnsparger, number one defense in football, but not strong enough today to stop the power running of Don of Mighty Rizzo. 106 remaining. The Redskins, a remarkable story. A team that has been put together with some outstanding choices by Beathard, finding people who were not wanted by others, putting it together under Joe Gibbs' leadership, this young coach of the Redskins, Harmon, to about the 33-yard line in a, in a city that's hungry for its identity, its own identity, the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., always trying to dig out of problems, and, and that comes with a territory. And, from the president right on down to the fellow who cleans out the stadium at RFK. How this has pulled that city together. And Dick, when they stop to analyze the performance today, I'm sure that much of the credit will go to Dan Henning and Joe Gibbs for the brilliant design of this package. Not only the power running and taking advantage of what John Riggins was able to do with his body, but the clever way they used motion, the way they used the Smurfs in this game today. What a tremendous play. The announcement now, it's official, the most valuable player, Super Bowl 17, John Riggins. Hail games, even big ones, come and go. Scores are forgotten. Somehow you always associate, once that name is in print, performance indelible, John Riggins will be remembered in Super Bowl history for his remarkable performance today. As a first down, and with that goes any faint hope of the Miami Dolphins. Riggins, during the regular year, gained 553 yards. In the playoffs, he's gained over 600 yards. In the four money games of the playoffs, Riggins gained more yardage than he did in all nine games of the regular season. And he had gone to Gibbs, and he decided at 33 that he said, hey, give me the ball. It was that simple. He didn't talk much to anyone, the press, the coaches, maybe his teammates. Give me the ball. Gibbs says you've got it and the Redskins will take that right home along with some very expensive rings. Fifteen seconds left. John Riggins. The MVP Joe Gibbs. The NFL coach of the year in his second season. Hail to the Redskins. Braves on the warpath. Victory for old D.C.